Thank you. Uh, it's a tremendous privilege to be with you guys today. You know, it wasn't that long ago that I was sitting where you're sitting right now. Uh, I, as Ron said, I graduated in 2007, and uh, I did the math. I think most of you were 10 to 14 years old in, in 2007, right? That might seem like a really long time ago to you, but to me, it's not that long ago. Um, getting older is weird, right? Uh, I think the thing that I find most weird is, as I get older is that um, when I was younger, I always had this conception of adulthood that, you know, one day like a butterfly, I would change from a caterpillar to a butterfly. I would go from being a kid to being an adult. And like one night I would go to bed, I would feel like a kid, and then I'd wake up in the morning and be like, oh, I'm an adult now. Uh, that hasn't happened yet. Uh, I'm 30 years old now. I, I uh, am an adult on paper, but I still don't feel that way. Um, I basically uh, had to start pretending to be an adult to get a job. And I've been pretending ever since. Basically, I cosplay every single day as a responsible adult who knows what he's doing, even though I'm not. Uh, and I had an epiphany a few years ago that literally everyone feels this way, right? Uh, when I was a kid, when I was actually a kid, you know, adults were so invincible. They always, you know, knew what was going on, and they were faking it the whole time. And that's what I do, I fake it, until I make it. And that's what you're going to do when you become an adult. Always, <laughs> really. Nobody has it together, we're all just faking it. Uh, so, the passage of time never ceases to amaze me, even though it's literally the most predictable thing in the universe, right? Um, and even though I don't feel like an adult, I know that my life has changed over the years. Um, life is just kind of funny that way. We all change through our life experiences, through the habits that we form, the connections that we make through other people. Our life changes over the years. And uh, one of the things that changes as you get older is the content of your Facebook feed. Uh, I remember in my early 20s when the wedding announcements started. And that was weird. And then I remember getting a little bit older and the baby announcements started. <laughs> and I was like, people we know are having babies? <laughs> That's weird. That's so bizarre. And, you know, I just couldn't get my head around because I still didn't feel like an adult. Uh, you know you're getting older when someone tells you that they're pregnant and you say congratulations and not, oh my God, what are you going to do? <laughs> that was it different life experience for me. Um, you know, life changes as you get older. I'm sure you've Everybody already experienced this. College is a great place to change and to grow. Uh, I remember when I first started my sophomore year here and seeing the incoming freshmen coming in on that first day. And I remember looking at them and thinking, there is no possible way I was that young when I started college, <laughs> but I was, and so were you. But even within the first few months of going to college, you, you can tell the freshmen, they start to look a little bit older, right? And they, they start to incorporate into the community. And it's because college, it's such a growth experience. You're running into ideas you never even thought to think. You're running into people from different backgrounds, different cultures, from, that have different stories. And all of these things change you as you interact with them. Um, you grow so much so fast, even your body changes. You know that freshman 15 that they talk about? It's not a myth. I used to be skinny, <laughs> and college changed all of that. And one of the things that I'm really thankful for when I was in college was my Christian community. Um, I had many friends in college, of course, who weren't Christian. Uh, but I, I had a lot of friends in college that were, and, and my Christian friends, they really formed the core of my community here at college. Um, and in that way, not only college was uh, an intellectual time of growth and a physical time of growth, but it was a spiritual time of growth as well. Uh, my understanding of God 
of who God is, of, of who I am as a Christian, all of that was uh, changed while I was at college. And a lot of that had to do with the Christian fellowship that I had. Uh, getting involved in Christian organizations had a, had a big impact on that. The Wesley Foundation was huge in that. Because I believe in what's going on here. I believe in what you guys are doing here. Right? I think that it's important. And uh, I got involved not only here, but in the, uh, the Baptist uh, Student Union, the Baptist Collegiate Ministries, whatever they call it uh, nowadays. Uh, the Presbyterian group, which used to be called the Westminster Society, but it's now called something else. Whatever that is. Uh, all of that made an impact. So after college, uh, I went to a seminary in Kentucky. And uh, life continued to change as it always does. I became one of those people making the wedding announcement on Facebook. Right? That was a big positive change in my life. Uh, but there were some other changes that weren't so good. Uh, I, just, I saw my Facebook feed change just a little bit more. Uh, I remember seeing a lot of my friends, some of my dear friends that I had made during college, as uh, we were getting older, people of faith that I knew were starting to lose their faith. And this was reflected in uh, you know, what I saw of them. I was living so far away, I felt, felt kind of impotent to address this at all. Uh, but my friends were losing their faith, and not only that, but some of them were becoming militant atheists. And this was heartbreaking for me uh, because uh, I was living so far away. You know, Facebook is not really a great place to have an authentic conversation about God. I don't know if you've realized this. It can turn into an argument pretty quickly, which is not what I wanted to do. But I can tell you, with, without any exaggeration or hyperbole, that my life finds its meaning in Jesus Christ. That all of the joy and peace that I have in my life finds its source in God. I don't know where I'd be without God. Uh, I'm sure that you've heard that before here. I'm sure that if you've come here before, that you've heard speakers talk about the, the way that Jesus Christ has changed their lives. If you've heard uh, Charlie speak about his story, he usually talks the first Friday of the year, right? And he tells a story about how he found Jesus Christ while he was tripping balls. And it changed his life forever. And if you haven't heard that story, you need to ask him about it. <laughs> there was this philosopher and scientist. Uh, his name was Blaise Pascal. Where, where are my computer science and my NSISD people? Right? Pascal, the programming language, was named after this guy. Uh, Pascal came up with this idea that we call... Pascal's wager. And it goes like this. He said that even if there is no God, even if God doesn't exist, then a life lived within faith is objectively better than a life lived without. Now Pascal believed in God. I also believe in God. But I think the point stands that the I see the struggles that my friends who have lost their faith are going through. I see the, the pain and the, and the heartache that they're going through and the loss of hope. And it grieves me. I mourn for that because I know that my life is better because of God. And I want that for the people that I love. I want them to experience the same peace and joy that I have in my life. And as I've reflected on this, you know, it's something that I've thought a lot about. And I, I try to think because, you know, a lot of my friends that were faithful Christians in college, they're still Christians to this day. They're still uh, people of faith. And I try to think about what was the difference between the people that have their faith and the people that lost it. What is the difference between my friends that have lost their faith and me? Well, I don't know if I'll ever really know the answer to that. Because, uh, you know, only God knows people's hearts. It all comes down to a personal decision. So I think ultimately the answer to that question is I don't know. But I did know this one significant factor between myself, my friends that have remained in the faith over the years, and those that have lost their faith. And the difference that I've noticed is that the people that have kept their faith 
the people who have maintained their faith through the years are the people who are involved in a local church while they're in college. Uh, now, going to church is something that's not a priority for a lot of college students, and that's something I totally get. Because when I was a freshman, and that alarm went off on Sunday mornings, I had a decision to make. I could either go to church, or I could sleep in until 2 p.m. <laughs> and 2 p.m. won a lot of those battles, right? <laughs> Uh, you know, in college you're so busy, there's so much going on all the time. It's impossible to get bored in college, right? Um, I even think about, uh, uh, excuse me, I just lost my place. Uh, it's difficult to make church a priority in your life because uh, you're so busy and, you know, sometimes when I was in college, I even went to class. And, you know, I, I had homework that I had to do. That, and, and, you know, Friday, as soon as Friday noon lunch was over, I went back to my dorm room and I did my homework, right? No, it always waited till Sunday because who, who's going to do that, right? Uh, it took me a while to realize the importance of that, and it wasn't until I got plugged into a church that felt like home that I was finally able to realize the benefit that church could provide for me, and I realized the, the benefit that it could have in my spiritual life. And I'm thankful to pass me for making that decision because being a part of that church has made me who I am today. Uh, so we need church. We need church in our lives. We need it for one thing is because God made us people who long to be with each other. When God created us, he, uh, when he made the first person, he said it is not good for this person to be alone. So he made another person. It says that God made us in his own image. And if you think about God, God is himself a community. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right? Three persons in one. A community, being together, being relational, is intrinsic to who God is. And when we were made in his image, that became part of who we are. We long for each other. We need each other. We're not meant to live in isolation. We desire community in our lives. Now, obviously, you can get a community right here at the Wesley Foundation, right? Or the BCM or the Presby Group or wherever else. There's lots of community to be had on the college campus. But it's not the same. Because every person who's here at the Wesley Foundation this morning is associated in some way with TU, right? But when you go to a local church, you're going to find a lot of people that have a non-college experience, a non-college uh, point of view. And that's important for us to have because we can learn so much from them. We can get outside of that TU bubble and learn so much from people that are older than us, that have had different life experiences, that have wisdom to pass down to us. And that's important. Um, what's more is the Christian community here at TU will only last for as long as you're in college. Right? I think a lot of my friends, they felt like they were getting so much Christian community just in their social group. They didn't see a need to go to church. And what happened was as soon as they graduated, they no longer had that Christian community. And they were in isolation. Their faith was in isolation. And because they had never developed the habit of going to church, that wasn't part of their lives. It wasn't intrinsic to them because our habits end up defining who we are. What we do every day, from day to day, that becomes who we are, what we really think is important, right? And because they had never developed that, they had lost that Christian community as the moment that they graduated from college. Uh, faith in isolation can't survive because when your faith is in isolation, it makes it really difficult when doubt comes. And doubt will come. Struggle will come. And that's okay. If you don't believe that it's okay to have some doubt and have some struggles, read the book of Ecclesiastes in the Bible and you will find a person who's struggling with his faith in God and struggling with his place in the world, we all do it. But we're not intended to do it alone. We're intended to do it in community with people that can help us, that can help us find our way when we struggle. 
And finally, not only are we built for community with each other, but we're built for communion with God. Uh, in the Methodist tradition, we talk about something called means of grace, right? This is like prayer, reading your Bible, fasting, uh, helping the poor, etc., etc. These are not things that makes God loves, love us anymore, right? Because God loves us all the time, 100%. But these are things that we can do to help us tap in and tune in to God. Things that we can do to experience God's grace more fully. And a big part of experiencing God's grace is corporate worship and holy communion. And a great place to get that is in a local church. Uh, I really want you to listen to the wisdom of someone who's a little bit older, even though that's weird, <laughs> who can reflect back on what church has done for me in my life and my faith. That not only have I grown older, but I've grown in Christ because I've had that community, because my faith has not been in isolation, because I've had that group that helped me. And what that's what I want for all of you. James 4, 8 says that if you draw near to God, that God will draw near to you. And that's what I want. I want as you grow older, that you would also grow in Christ and grow in your faith. Uh, and the church needs you. We need you so badly. We need your talents and your perspective and what you bring to the table because God made you a unique creature and he made you to be part of the body of Christ. He made you to have an important role to serve, that, to be part of that united body, and, and we need you. Now, I'd love for you to come to my church, First United Methodist Church in Claremont. 1650 North Highway, <laughs> just up the road from RSU, over to the side. I'd love for you to go to a Methodist church, like University Methodist, which is right down here. The pastor is literally sitting right there. You can talk to him. <laughs> but what I really want for you is for you to find a church. <laughs> what I really want for you is for you to find a church that you can call home. A place where your faith will not be in isolation. A place where you can grow in Christ. And so that's my story. And uh, I, I hope that you can learn from freshman Stephen, who slept until 2 p.m., <laughs> that while that is an attractive option oh so many times, uh, you know, making that habit, making it internal to you, making that part of who you are, <coughs> Uh, is so important to growing in Christ. Thank you guys.